Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Gaming Dog Caffey. My name is Isaac. We are back for episode three of Hypervolemia. Last episode, we set up our new base over here, which is much bigger than our last one, and it is much, much closer to this massive ocean of life essence. And speaking of which, actually, before we get into what I have done uh, between this episode and last episode, which is mostly uh, set up these Aubrey bushes, uh, I want to show you guys a cool feature that some people in the comment section of the last episode uh, told me about in regards to the portable tank. Uh, so if you go ahead and grab this thing and have it in your inventory uh, and if you go to controls and down to mechanism there is a control here for mechanism item mode switch and if you shift and press that uh, that button so for me it's m shift and press m it changes the tank into bucket mode and basically what the tank can do in bucket mode is act like a bucket and so if you walk around uh, over here right now we have what 6613 millibuckets of life essence inside this tank and if we just right click over here it acts just like a bucket and just picks up the life essence and stores it within the portable tank and this thing is now almost full with 13,630 millibuckets. It's not quite full uh, because there isn't enough space for that last thousand millibuckets to get in there but it's close enough to being full and this is coming really useful between episodes uh, when I have to keep coming back over and getting some stuff. I don't have to go back and forth with the two buckets that I have to get a ton of, of life essence which is really cool and has resulted in uh, this blood altar. One thing you do need to be wary of is the fact that uh, it does need to be turned off from bucket mode otherwise uh, it will start to flow everywhere so let me quickly grab some cobblestone to get rid of this actually i think we can just pick this back up right yeah we can okay so you want to shift and m again to get rid of it and then if we put it back now boom it works just fine Cool. So we'll set it back to output mode, get the blood going back into the blood altar here. Uh, I have set up all of our uh, Aubrey bushes again over here. Some people did say that if you put slabs all around the bottom and then one on top, it will act as complete darkness and allow you to put the Aubrey bushes down like in there. It kind of thinks that that is in complete darkness, even though it's not quite in complete darkness. And they also grow at kind of maximum speed. One thing that did really throw me off that I'm going to put out there for anyone who wants to try this as well, if you like playing along with the pack. Um, don't try and do this with red rock slabs because I tried doing this i made like a ton of red rock slabs where did i put those uh, i put them somewhere but i made a ton of red rock slabs and i tried to make this work with slabs made of this rock because it's a lot easier to get uh, and it didn't work it did not work at all i'm not quite sure what the difference is there but it doesn't work so uh, don't give that a try it will not work <laughs> anyway uh, what i want to work on in today's episode is i want to kind of start on this top right hand corner of the quest book here the first quest of which wants us to make the blood dynamo which is a device that allows us to turn the life essence that massive ocean of liquid that we've got uh, into redstone flux which we can then use to power some of these machines down here uh, and then we can use these machines to actually start to get some better tools armor uh, and stuff like that and uh, this kind of answers the question that i posed last episode which is uh, why none of the mechanism stuff is working so uh, to make this it's actually fairly easy it's a little bit it's gonna take a little bit of time but all that we need to make the blood dynamo is one blood altar, which is super easy to make, as well as eight of these redstone blocks. And, of course, uh, as we showed before, to get a redstone block, all we need is one piece of sand and one bucket of lava. So we are going to need eight buckets of lava, which thankfully is not too bad because we have a bunch of iron ingots in our chest over here. And we also have a bunch more orberries as well now. Uh, I did a little bit more harvest in between episodes. And especially uh, these two here, this gold one and this iron one, which both have the growth pulses underneath. Um, these two have been going super, super fast. Now, uh, the reason why I put them under the gold one and I didn't put it under the copper one again is because someone did point out again in the comments section that uh, we can use golden apples to get a bunch of health regeneration. And so having a lot of gold is going to help us a lot if we run out of life essence at any point or if we have to do any big crafts that require a lot of regeneration. And uh, so that's why I've kind of invested a little bit more into gold than I have into copper. Although uh, making some of these machines that we're going to make in today's episode is going to require a lot more copper than gold. So we might want to switch up a little bit throughout the episode we'll see but for now all we need to do is go ahead and make ourselves six more of these iron buckets fill them up with life essence stick them in the blood altar until they become buckets of lava and then craft them up with a little bit of sand so what i'm going to do guys is i'm going to go away i'm going to fill all these up i'm going to turn them all into buckets of lava and i'll be back in a second and a little while later we now have eight buckets of lava and eight blocks of sand so if we come over into our crafting table we should be able to fairly easily make eight blocks of these and i did 
we do need some more redstone for the next thing that we're going to craft because you can look at the quests and actually see uh, what recipes we're going to need next. So I can click on these quests even though we haven't unlocked them and uh, see what we're going to need to craft. So I've looked at the recipes for the induction crucible furnace as well as the metal caster and we do need quite a bit more redstone but I didn't want to make any more iron buckets in case we got the buckets back from this crafting recipe and as it turns out we actually do. So we could have saved quite a bit of iron by doing these like one by one but doing them all at once makes it a little bit faster and also those buckets are not going to go to waste we can use of crafting more stuff and getting large amounts of iron and even life essence in the future as well so that's pretty cool uh, but we should now have enough to make ourselves the uh, the blood dynamo all we need is our bones and our skulls we can come over here craft ourselves up a blood altar again for those who are wondering uh, because people ask me this all the time the way that you get items out of your inventory into the crafting station in the exact like form that you want them is if you shift and then left click on this question mark uh, it will go ahead and if you have the right items in your inventory it will just put them into the crafting table for you it's a lot quicker uh, and easier way of crafting stuff which is quite nice uh, that should complete the quest there which it has and as a reward we get another blood dynamo as well as six basic universal cable these are like paramount we do definitely need these because you cannot actually pull the power out without having these universal cables i did a bit of testing in a single player world and it took me a little while to realize or to try and figure out why i couldn't get the power out of the blood dynamo uh, unlike most power dynamos you can't just put them next to a block that receives the power it's a little weird but uh, that's how they work so for now, let's just go ahead and put both of these down. We'll say, like, here and here. We'll hook them up with some of these basic universal cables for mechanism, which can hook up any kind of power source. I believe they can convert uh, RF to EU and, and stuff like that as well. I don't think we have Industrial Craft installed, but it's a pretty cool feature they can do. Uh, and then I'm not going to put any more down just yet because I'm fairly certain it's a pretty janky setup that we're going to need for both of these next two machines. So uh, we'll work through the quests here. The next quest requires us to make one iron gear. Thankfully, iron gears are super easy to make all that we need is a bunch of iron and a stone gear and a stone gear is just a stick and some cobblestone and thankfully one of the things that i did do between episodes is make quite a bit more oak wood planks uh, i also used quite a few of them to smelt up a bunch of copper and we might as well go ahead and smell up quite a bit of gold as well because as you're going to see in a second when we start making uh, some of those machines they need a lot of copper like a ton of copper so uh, let's go ahead and first of all actually let's make ourselves a stick let's grab some of the cobblestone Let's make ourselves the cobblestone gear. And then let's go ahead and make the iron gear. And there we go. Quest complete. Beautiful. Let's go and grab the golden apple, I guess, for that. I don't really see the point in getting normal apples because it's just via tree farming. We can get a ton of normal apples and keep ourselves uh, nourished enough. Now, the next quest, melting it down, it requires us to make the induction crucible furnace. Now, this thing is where it starts to get a little bit uh, harder to craft stuff. So, this thing requires a furnace, which is fairly easy, uh, two copper ingots, one redstone, four of these heating coils, each of which requires four redstone, four copper, and then either a gold or berry or a golden nugget. Uh, I don't see the point in using a golden orberry because we can smell golden orberries into like multiple golden ingots. So it seems much more beneficial to, uh, to go ahead and use the golden nuggets instead. Uh, but we are going to need a lot more redstone, also a lot of copper. Cobblestone is obviously fairly easy now that we've got our cobblestone generator. And then finally, the last thing that we need to craft is this guy in the middle. And to make the refactory casing, we need four iron and four of these refactory bricks, which are made by smelting refactory clay, which is where that clay comes in that we made like all those episodes ago back in episode one and uh, we got 64 clay up here so let's throw some dirt in there that's going to turn into sand once that becomes sand that will get us eight of these then we can smell each individual one of those into bricks that's going to get us eight bricks which should do us for two of these refactory casings i'm fairly certain that the next machine that we're going to make also requires a refactory casing so we'll wait for that to finish then we'll get these smelted up and then i think i'm just gonna have to go away again to to craft up a bunch of the other stuff so we'll take you throw you in there do something like that take all of those cool stuff we'll get these smelting up we can stop the gold for now those are going to turn into the eight bricks that gets us that uh, all we need to do now is get ourselves a bunch more redstone what's that 16 17 redstone so we're going to need at least three more blocks so again i'm going to go away i'm going to grab three more i'm going to make three more buckets worth of lava uh, I know we've got zombies out already, jeez. Gonna make three more buckets of lava, get three more blocks of sand, craft them together, get some more redstone, and I'll be back in a second. And again, a little while later, now that we have all of the sand and lava buckets, we can make ourselves three more blocks of redstone. Boom, boom, and boom. Uh, we can go ahead and turn all of those into redstone and then craft up four of these. And once we got four of those, I think I'll need to make one of these real quick. And then actually, we might as well go ahead and make both because we are going to need them. And then, boom. 
there we go. We got ourselves the Induction Crucible Furnace, which is another quest complete. We'll go ahead and claim our rewards for that. And this one here, the Refactory Hopper, is going to come in super useful in just a second. And the gold's also going to come in useful, but we do already have uh, our own little amount of gold. Uh, the next quest requires us to make ourselves a Metal Caster. And again, to make a Metal Caster, uh, this one is actually much easier than the other one. Uh, just a chest, two redstone, two iron, one piston, as well as that other Refactory Casing. So, this is where all of those oak wooden planks come in useful. Let's go ahead and make ourselves uh, another chest like so. Uh, to make a piston, we are going to need four cobblestone. So let's quickly grab uh, three more of this. There we go, and I think that's pretty much everything. I cooked up some more iron. I'm going to go ahead and throw you in there, get some more smelted up. Let's make a piston. A boom, we get ourselves a metal caster. Nice. So, the next quest actually wants us to use these machines. So, we'll go ahead and claim a reward. Uh, oh, we can take some more orberry bushes. Um... Hmm, we get some aluminium ones, which is good, or some aluminum ones, depending on where you are in the world. Uh, but we get one of those bushes, and we get to pick another one. Uh, I'm not too sure, actually. We've been using, like, I kind of want to say copper, but that's only because the copper one doesn't have a growth pulser. And I'm fairly certain one of these future quests, this one here, actually gives us another growth pulser. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wait, I'm going to hold off on claiming this quest just yet. Uh, I'm going to decide, like, depend, depending on which one I feel we need the most uh, in a little bit. But for now, let's take a look at the pouring gold quest. This one here wants us to make the gear cast uh, for a gear. And the way that we do this is using the metal cast and the induction crucible that we just made. So if we look at this, traditionally you would make this in a casting table from Tinker's Con. Construct. But there is no recipe for any of the Tinker's Construct smeltery items, so instead we need to use Foundry's Metal Caster uh, using either some aluminium brass or the liquid gold. We don't have aluminium brass yet, we could make some using that aluminium orbery bush, but it's going to be much, much easier for us to use liquid gold. And the way that we get liquid gold is using the induction crucible furnace. So let's come over to this guy real quick. And then what we're going to do is we're going to set it up kind of like this. We're going to have that there, we're going to have the induction crucible furnace there and then we're gonna have another you basic universal cable here and that's because we need to use this hopper over here to actually move the liquids from the induction furnace at the top down and into this guy here, the metal caster. The metal caster also needs power as well as the induction furnace. So right now, obviously none of these are getting power. That is because both of these blood dynamos do not have any life essence in them. So let's go ahead and quickly grab ourselves our buckets. We could use the tank for this, but I kind of want to leave my tank uh, above the blood altar for now. And also we have no uh, fluid pipes, so no real way of moving them into both uh, dynamos at once. But so we'll go ahead and grab ourselves a bunch of buckets of life essence so we can go ahead and just right click these into the altar. We'll put four in each for now. I'm not quite sure how much these produce. Uh, in terms of redstone flux per tick, uh, I'm going to assume it's like not a whole lot, but it's it's good enough because it's going to make these two machines work. Uh, and then to get these actually running, we do need to make ourselves some levers. So let's come back over here. We've got some cobblestone. Uh, only got one cobblestone, but for now, I think one should be fine to get this up and running. So we'll turn that on, and that should start to produce some redstone flux for us to actually use. That one down there has received redstone flux. The one at the top does not seem to have, for whatever reason. Oh, it's heating up. Okay, that's fine. Uh, so what we need to do up here is actually go ahead and throw some gold in there, and we've got a little line here, and you'll see the gold will not melt until it reach 1,350k. I'm not quite sure what k is, uh, but once, that's, once it reaches 1,350, the gold will start to melt, at which point it will pass down through this refractory hopper into the metal caster down here, and as you can see in this recipe, all we need to do is have an iron gear uh, in the metal caster at the time, and that will go ahead and transform the liquid gold through the metal caster into this this gear cast mold here so uh, this thing should be almost there uh, whilst you have that to finish i'm going to quickly show you the next quest because the next quest wants us to make a sword mold and to make sword molds all we have to do is smelt up a soft sword mold which is made using either a wooden sword or a cobblestone sword which are the two that we can make uh, by default in vanilla minecraft we can't craft an iron sword and uh, the traditional way we have to use the metal caster and in order to make that uh, in order to make the uh, the blank soft mold we need two of these refractory clay again so we are going to need to get ourselves one more piece of sand to make another bunch of that refractory clay so we'll stick that head in there that's going to turn it into dirt then gravel then sand this guy should be almost there it's getting there slow Slowly but surely. Uh, this thing is using blood at a really, really slow pace, which is pretty cool. Let's quickly grab one more piece of cobblestone. We should really make this setup a little bit better. I should put like some wood uh, maybe behind it here so I can get cobblestone without risk of breaking uh, the red rock behind it. 
But uh, for now, let's go ahead and do this. I don't know if this is going to make it, like, heat up any faster, or if it's just going to not help at all. We'll find out, I guess. Uh, but it's almost there, so it should start to melt down like it is doing. Uh, that we left for too long and turned into cobblestone, which is not what we want. Uh, this time, let's keep an eye on it. So this time we'll grab it when it becomes sand. Now that we have ourselves some sand, we can again go ahead and make ourselves some more of this refractory clay. And let's come back over here. How is this doing? They have all smelted and gone down into the metal caster. And it looks like we put maybe one ingot too many in. I'm not quite sure how much, uh, how many millibuckets you get uh, per golden ingot in this setup. I don't know if it's the same as Tinker's Construct uh, or not. But the good news is we have ourselves the gear cast. It didn't use up the iron gear uh, as well, which is pretty cool. And that is another quest completed. So we can go ahead and claim the reward for that, which is another portable tank so if we wanted to now we could go change that into bucket mode grab ourselves a bunch of blood from out here again fill this thing up with its uh, 13,000 millibuckets and once it's full or 14,000 millibuckets we can head back inside and we can stick this one above the blood dynamo so now we have one dedicated to the blood altar as well as one dedicated to this guy here we might want to ah, it's gonna be a pain actually because i don't know if we can have that I don't think you can pull power from the sides of these, so we might have to wait until we get some kind of... Oh, I don't want to... I'm in bucket mode. No, no, no. Out of bucket mode. And we might have to wait until we get some form of fluid pipe from Mechanism to actually have it come down and then into the Blood Dynamo, which I know we can do, uh, but just not yet. Uh, and then the next quest, of course, like we just said, is to make ourselves the Soft Sword Mold. And to make that, we are, of course, going to need to get ourselves the Soft Mold which is super easy to make. We need a wooden sword, which is, again, super duper easy to make. We can just do that. Craft these two together. And boom! We get ourselves a soft mold, which we can then smelt up in our furnace. And once that is done, we will have ourselves the normal sword mold, which we can then, if we want to, use to go ahead and actually make ourselves some swords and some cool stuff like that. Uh, you have to do the same process for armor as well. Uh, you remember last episode, I talked about maybe making iron armor uh, because I got a bunch of wood to make wooden armor, but then we didn't really need it because we had so much iron. Well, it turns out if you want to make yourself any kind of iron armor, be it helmets, boots, chest plates, whatever, you first of all have to make the, the leggings mold, which is made using the wooden armor and the blank soft mold so we might as well go ahead and make ourselves a full set of wooden armor anyway i'm not sure if the uh, when you're making the mold i don't know if the items have to be undamaged so like for instance i don't know if we can wear this wooden armor and then use it for molds i'm not gonna i, don't, I say i'm not gonna risk it it's not really too much of a risk it's a few pieces of wood but uh, we're just gonna go ahead and use these to make ourselves some molds which we can then use to make ourselves some iron armor using the exact same process uh, oh i didn't want to do that <laughs> i didn't want to do that whatsoever okay well we'll come back to that in a second i'll make some more sand and we'll make some more molds and then we'll start making ourselves some some armor boom uh, is that quest done? It is not. The second part of the quest is actually to go ahead and make an iron sword. So for that, we're going to have to get rid of this, I think. Uh, I'm hoping that breaking it will empty its contents. So we did waste a little bit of gold there, but I'm hoping... Yeah, it's gone. Okay, cool stuff. So now if we throw some iron in there... Uh, it does look like it has to heat up again, which is a bit of a pain. Uh, do these still have any life points in them? They do, so that should start to heat up pretty quickly. Oh, we broke the levers when we put the blood down. Okay, turn them back on. Now we should start to heat up fairly quickly. There we go, with two dynamos. It does look to be going, actually, uh, much, much faster, which is cool. Let me quickly check how much we need for that. We need 288, and I think that's two ingots worth. I think an ingot, as far as I'm aware, is 144 millibuckets. Yeah, so an ingot gets 144, so as you would expect uh, for making a saw, we need to put two ingots in there. Wait for that to finish smelting up. And again, just like before, once it's finished and moved down into the bottom section, did we lose some there? We've only got 216 millibuckets, and in order to make this work, we need 288. So it looks like there's possibly some loss somewhere in this, because we did we did just lose a few millibuckets there. Um, either way, I have made some more sand, so we can go ahead and make some more of these molds, like so. And that's going to get us four more, which is perfect. This time, let's not shift-click. Let's instead just do these one at a time, like so. There we go. I don't know why it didn't work the other way around, but we'll do that. We'll do this, and we'll do the boots. We will go ahead and smell all the... I made two boots. That's fine. We don't need the other one. Uh, we'll go ahead and smell these all up. And once they're done, we can make ourselves a full set of iron armor. Uh, combined with our iron sword is going to make me feel much, much safer about walking around in these uh, in this wilderness that we found ourselves in. So if we throw that in there, I think we might need a stick of some kind. Yeah, we need to put a stick in there as well to, uh, to, to, to bind the metal to, I guess. Uh, boom! There we go. Iron sword complete. 
Nice. Back into the quest book, we get ourselves another growth a growth pulsar, uh, as well as actually a helmet mold. We didn't need to make that. And some osmium seeds, which is perfect, because we are about to move into the mechanism stuff, uh, probably starting next episode. Let me dump some of this junk uh, into this chest here so we can actually claim our rewards. There we go. We will stick our growth pulsar underneath the copper this time around. So let's go and plonk that down underneath. I guess this one will do for the time being. We'll put it... Uh, did I put dirt there? I didn't. So we need some dirt there. Then the growth pulsar there. I uh, don't have any dirt on me. Thankfully, we can make it super easy in the blood altar. Let's just stick you in there. I don't recall making end stone, but that's fine. Uh, we'll leave that in there. E you are done. Good stuff. Let's put you in there. Let's put a bunch of iron into here like that. Uh, and the heat does stay by the looks of things if you actually keep the power going, which is kind of cool. We don't have to wait for it over and over and over again. We will take the mold out. We will put the helmet mold in. I don't know if we need anything else to make the helmet. Let's start that before it turns into gravel. Ah, we were too slow. Okay, that's fine. Uh, what do we need for a helmet? It is quite simply just the mold. So as soon as we get enough iron in there, that is going to craft up into the helmet. We'll then do the chest plate, I guess, actually, next. We'll throw you in as well. We might need actually quite a bit more iron to make this work. So we throw in 12. I think it's 24 to make a full set of armor. So we'll throw in the equivalent of 24 there. Again, I made it go to gravel. Uh, do we have any dirt? We don't. Okay, so we have to wait and catch this when it actually becomes dirt. There we go. Okay. It does it a lot faster than I think because some of them take forever. But uh, there we go. That is now done. Let's fill you in. Boom, boom. That one should now grow much, much quicker and give us a much nicer supply of copper. Let's take our chest plate and take you out. We'll go for boots next. We can go ahead and put these on. Oh, look at this. Look at this. We're making progress. We'll take the boots. Throw you on. Don't want to make more boots. I uh, caught that before it failed there. And then finally, the last thing we need are the leggings, which I believe are over here in the furnace. They are. We'll throw that one in. And we should be pretty much good to go. How much in there? 864. How much do we need for leggings? Were we close? Were we close? We need a thousand. Only 756. We, we, we were somewhat close. We wasted again 108 millibuckets of iron. But we are now fully decked out with a nice suit of iron armor as well as this iron sword. So we can go out into the night if we would like and fight some of these mobs off uh, without risk of like just complete and utter death every single time. Which is pretty cool. Uh, next episode we will come back and we will probably start working um, on... I think we'll complete a few more of these quests. But we'll probably start working on upgrading our altar to a higher tier. We did complete this quest actually uh, in regards to the division sigil we can go ahead and claim that reward uh, actually as some people did point out in the comment section uh, at the end of last episode i made the mistake of thinking that uh, up at the top there in will where it says current lp and capacity that is in fact not always there it's only it's only ever there when you have the division sigil in your inventory if you don't have that it doesn't show up so you do need to craft this uh, at the end I, I kind of speculated as to whether or not you actually needed it turns out you do uh, thanks to everybody in the comment section who pointed that out but yeah next episode we'll come back we'll probably up look into upgrading the altar to tier two maybe even tier three so we can start crafting some more stuff maybe try and move into a bit more magical crops so we can start growing uh, some more ingots faster instead of having to like harvest these all the time maybe start to look into automating these because we do have some cool mods like mine factory reloaded installed so we can start to automate uh, the farming with that uh, and also for the trees as well so we could work on getting a tree farm if we wanted to and stuff like that we might also look into the last section of this quest book down here or the last section of this quest line which is starting with some basic mechanism machines uh, and stuff like that but with that guys i'm gonna end this episode of hyper volemia there thanks for watching as always if you did enjoy the video be sure to like it really does help out a lot leave a comment down below and i will see you guys next time yeah.